driving force of any enterprise is vision. Without it, life, an intention or a goal looks blurred or remains in a vacuum or an illusion. I, I started by actually having a, a, I mean, a defined vision in terms of what I, I would like to achieve in the university as the Vice Chancellor. When I started work on November 1, 2017, and uh, I had what I call the 12 point agenda. Not necessarily wanting to be different in terms of the vision and mission of the university, but to be able to really keep myself focused. When vision is shared among the officers and rank and file, execution becomes easier. The driving factor uh, for all these developments you have seen or you are seeing is the management style. My own understanding is the management style led by our vice chancellor. You know, the, the vision line is clear. Before we came on board, there were many projects struggling on this campus. Some, uh, there was no answer to how they could be finished, but um, when he took over, the approach to things changed. The task force approach. It's both planning, implementation, and uh, monitoring. No wonder the Federal University of Agriculture, FUNAP, has become a campus with avalanche of ongoing and completed projects meant to fulfill the nexus of teaching, research, and extension services. The core mandate of the university, Professor Felix Kolaoli Salako, remains committed to in the last five years as a man with vision. His administration's impact is visible in every aspect of what makes an ivory tower fulfill the toga of town and gown connection, the ultimate for an institution worthy of its onions. The leadership has been engrossed in how to turn to best those things met on ground and add other values that would make them competitive, exceptional and more beneficial to all the various segments being served. Many of such projects were creatively conceptualized, constructively and uniquely executed and positioned to meet the needs and yearnings of both the university populace as well as adjoining communities. Occupying a place of relevance, distinction and unquantifiable benefits is the dam project constructed at the Mawuko end of the institution. 
This project is not just for project execution's sake, but in realization of meeting the core mandates of teaching, research, and extension services. This project, very dear to the heart of the leadership of the university, was conceived in 2018, but could not be completed in a record time due to COVID-19 lockdown. According to the site engineer of the project contractor, H5, engineer Adebayo Olukayode, the dam would provide raw water for both domestic and commercial use of the university, irrigation, fishing via Cajun system, and with an installation of a turbine, it has the prospect of generating electricity for the university community. He explains steps taken to avoid any spillover from the dam as a result of overflowing and what has been done for the community around the streams where the water is sourced. The school have provided two bowls to the community. So for them to, be have, to have their own water there, so that they will not come here and be polluting the water. In dam construction, during our design, we have to, we constructed a spillway that have a very, very I have a, a free board of 1.5 meters and the spillway is very very big with a width of 20 meters. That the, 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 the spillway is there. Also, we also have the pens the pens the pen stock there. Those are the two things that we'll be using in regulating the water from the dam. Now uh, the level with this this the spillway operate to water level. As the water level high, it will go and spill out but the pen stock will just be a mechanical form of releasing the water outside so with, with these two things put in place you can never have an, an upsurge of water across the embankment professor salako corroborates on the objectives for embarking on the project the construction of dam apart from the idea of providing portable water is also to aid the teaching environment Definitely, you need water in the laboratories. And uh, by the time we, we reticulate the, the uh, portable water or refined water around the campus, definitely it's going to assist in terms of convenience and training. Um, the irrigation facility I mentioned, and uh, there is an attempt to pump water down here. As an administration concerned with taking the university to a higher pedestal of international repute, Numerous enduring legacy projects were carefully executed to accomplish not just its mandates, but also make it much more competitive globally. No wonder FINAB, under the current ranking of academic universities in the world, is within the bracket of 201 to 300 in best 1,000 universities out of 2,500 so rated in the field of veterinary sciences. The College of Veterinary Sciences, apart from having top-notch academic staff, is also well complemented with necessary equipment to make learning, teaching and extension services seamless, rewarding and qualitative. Um, we have facilitated the proposal writing for a word of grant to support research and the one that I can quickly remember now is the duration of one is the uh, third fund, the National Research Fund, which many of our, some of our lecturers are enjoying. And another one is the institutional based research, being sponsored by uh, tertiary education trust fund, third fund. Um, in terms of learning environment, we, I actually had it as a focus, not just to build, but to equip the buildings. And this has really made us now to have quite a number of uh, facilities in our classrooms. Many of the buildings you see around came with packing for furniture and teaching equipment, modern day teaching equipment, smart boards, interactive boards, computers, Another thing that can aid e learning. In uh, January 2021, I think the world had no option other than uh, 
to accept that e-learning has come to stay after COVID-19. And that encourages what you call virtual teaching, virtual learning. Uh, I, I'm glad to say that uh, the university has facilities for such in different classrooms. And we actually conducted trainings for our lecturers and other stakeholders in teaching. In January, February 2021, immediately we came back after the lockdown of 2020. Cadiz, Center of Excellence in Agricultural Development and Sustainable Environment, is an international center established for postgraduate training of candidates from within Nigeria and African countries to broaden the frontiers of exchange of knowledge and learning in the region. Many of the graduates from the center who were from outside the country have become policy formulators and game changers in their respective countries, given the knowledge impacted on them with the huge investment in the facilities provided for the center. In order to make learning a worthwhile enterprise, necessary inputs to ensure the labors of the founding fathers were not in vain were put in place. Library is a major atri in a thriving learning environment. Apart from ensuring that current texts were supplied to the unit, the Vice Chancellor, as a focus administrator, has within his tenure built on what he met on ground by taking the library to another level with the completion of an ultra-modern ICT-compliant library annex named after the first Nigerian Nobel laureate and literary giant, Professor Wally Shoyinka. The institution's librarian, Professor Mrs. Feintola Onifade, gives an insight of the unique beauty and value Wally Shoyinka Library Annex has added to studying. And, uh, this is electronic signage. What we do is when you come to the library and want to search for any material, you can put the keyboard on instead of going through the whole day cabinet box. So what we have done is that we attach the port, which is the library integrated software that we're using on it, so you can search through it. I think there is any information we want to pass to our users also, we always put it there. Once you come in, you can be scrolling and then telling you what and what. The new program, the new books that are being acquired, you can put it on the library and it will uh, you see, it's what's like uh, our normal uh, tab or uh, iPhones. Also remarkable within the tenure of Professor Salako as the Vice Chancellor was the promotion to the rank of professor for the first time in the institution's history, the librarian, former Dr. Mrs. Feintola Onifade. Two others in the unit were also elevated to professors, a phenomenal feat demonstrating the respect accorded library and information science in Nigeria. The administration has also taken into cognizance not just staffing of the library, but also how to galvanize the library for benefits for both the lecturers and students. This is a library that has passion for reading, for, for bringing people to uh, read and to improve the reading culture. We have volunteers every month from all the colleges. We have a, a kind of a book review. They are the ones to suggest a book, then they will review it if it is your college, we will publicize it and other people will come and see what we have in there, that we have this book in the library. These are the things that are inside it and you can use it to do that. Because right now the library is presently developing an app that you don't need to get to the library. You can ask any question and there are some other uh, uh, modules on the app that they can use. And those are the things that we are doing to impact our community and uh, eventually the larger community. As an academic, the current administration also placed a premium on the quality of its academic programs, apart from equipping the library and other colleges as well as extension services. Professor Christian Ikeobi is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic. The last 
well, four and a half years of Professor Salako's tenure as Vice Chancellor has been like a breath of fresh air. Indeed, we have had programs running as scheduled. We have had successes registered in so many ways. And one of the successes I would like to highlight is that we've had, we've registered successes in the area of accreditation of academic programs. And as I speak to you now, almost all our academic programs in the Federal University of Agriculture of Bekuta, I'm talking about bachelor degree programs are accredited with the National Universities Commission, NUC, in Abuja. A lot of the uh, programs, academic programs in our university now have their own buildings completed. Whether it is in terms of extension of the college buildings or, in, you know, or construction of new academic buildings or you know, um, construction of the, the, the other time, the agricultural laboratory complex uh, was commissioned. And a lot of lecture theaters too we are commissioned. These are projects that you know, have been clearly and carefully selected to impact upon the academic programs being run in the university to ensure that students are comfortably accommodate, accommodated in modern and fully equipped classrooms and lecturers that are interacting with these students have the required you know, you know, um, comfortable uh, environment within which to impact knowledge of, uh, to the students. As an institution itching for excellence, in all spheres of its academic programs, as well as those newly added under the period in review, like mechatronics in the College of Engineering, notwithstanding its newness, it has had monumental provision of equipment, apart from staffing and lecturers. Acting Head of the Department of Mechatronics, Dr. Adekunle Oyelami explains the features of one of the equipments on ground. So this is a PLC designer training equipment. It's a state-of-the-art equipment that you we had to find in a, a higher institution. It's because of the belief of management in the um, prospects of having a mechatronics department that is functional, that is relevant, for an agricultural-based uh, institution like this that has made the management to invest heavily in this. And uh, what does this equipment do? It is, of course, as we have seen, it's a PLC designer training equipment. PLC means programmable uh, logic control. Uh, when you compare it to a wired uh, control system, where once you have configured an automation, you know, mechatronics generally is even only about automation. Uh, so when you have configured an automation line, if maybe a, a production line and you have a reason to change your product specification, you will need to have to change manually, remove some of these cables, realign, readjust. But when it is programmable, you only need to redesign on the system, uh, the system and download what you have uh, programmed and you have a different setup entirely using the same machine for another kind of production. You can see we have two distinct stations there, we, they are only uh, joined together and that's why we said we moved them together before. They are actually distinct, two distinct stations. This station you, you have here um, is for, for what we, we call uh, factory automation. And when you are talking about factory automation, you are talking about an uh, automation system that deals with an object that is definable. Of course, you can define this you can talk about the color, you can talk about the texture, what material, you can talk about the height. And that means when you are doing the programming, it's easy for you to say, oh, it is of this diameter when the grip or the gripper is to pick it and is to move all around. So, and essentially what this equipment does is to train students uh, on how to uh, program an automation line so that when they get to the industry, 
what they will see in the industry is only an, uh, an enhanced version of this for industrial use, why this one is for laboratory use. But essentially, it's the same uh, technology uh, all, all over uh, the globe. Given the level of equipment and staffing of Mechatronics Department, its accreditation by the National Universities Commission, NUC, had also enhanced its recognition as a center for the training of auto technicians and integrated services by the National Automotive Design and Development Council, NADDC, a federal government agency. By outside influences, you won't be distracted at all. I said, who does that? Does that want to? She said, because Toba was the environment, you know, my distracted. I told you what she would do. Yes, no, you'll be focused. The good entrepreneur is going to be focused. I'm a focus. So, quality of the good entrepreneur. That's what I'm trying to do. High energy. Entrepreneurs have a plan and a vision, and they work it. Entrepreneurs are often health conscious to health. Professor Lawale Hassan Dairo, the Dean of College of Engineering, comments. Mechatronics engineering uh, in Nigeria is per se a, a new course. When we started off, we could say we were just about two universities running at that time. But recently, uh, we have private universities and some state universities also running mechatronics engineering. Um, value addition. There is a recent course, I mean, a recent workshop training that we are presently doing now. When you are coming, you see a lot of cars out there. That is a kind of specialized mechatronics uh, training program organized by the NADDC. It is done in the six geopolitical zones. And fortunately, FUNAB is one of those zones. If we didn't get that, and if it was not like a recognized unit in the college, they fire the university, we might not have been able to do that. And that is just made possible because uh, things are really on ground and people could see that, okay, this uh, department is functioning. Lecturers that are below the grade of senior lecturers, lecturer one, lecturer two, and uh, assistant lecturers, they've benefited a whole lot of from overseas training. Presently, we have about in mechatronics, we have two people there. In electrical, we have about two people. Mechanical, two people. Those are the ones that are out. And some other people that had gone there had been back into the college. Um, that is possible. Well, through Ted Fund, but through the university too, because if there's no university for them to come and there's nobody to do a recommendation, it might not be possible to get them there. But that's staff development. On extension services, one of the major mandates of the university, efforts were geared towards advancing on what was met on ground in terms of farming activities in both food and cash crops, not just to improve internally generated revenue, but also to aggregate an opportunities available to advance quality teaching, nurture professional agriculturists, as well as provide for the immediate needs of the various communities in and around the institution. Such items like gari, oil palm, cashew nut products, honey, yams, maize and other related edibles. The lockdown as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and the prolonged acid strike were different kettle of fishes for the leadership of this administration eager to make a mac and get purpose fulfilled. Rather than sitting at home doing nothing, we work more in terms of development of the university during COVID-19 lockdown and during the strike. During the COVID-19 lockdown, we actually moved swiftly into agricultural production because we are taught or we knew that time that with the lockdown, there will be food crisis after the lockdown. Farmers were not going out. Market women were restricted, movement was restricted. We saw the opportunity to intensify agricultural production, and we did that in 2020. So the the lockdown actually provided a, a opportunities for me, in particular, to re-strategize in terms of uh, infrastructural development, 
And that's why we can talk about this. We didn't go to sleep. In fact, during that period, we had people who were sleeping. I mean, artisans who are sleeping on site, doing their work. And uh, I want to thank God that all that happened because inflation will have taken the steam out of our achievements. The issue of strike, it has become part of the university system in Nigeria. Professor Olusha Lababatunde Kende, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, explains the steps taken by the university to keep revenue yielding ventures functioning during industrial lockouts. The Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor Development superintends over about 15 directories and units. And I can say that within the limited time that I have been here, we have ensured that these directories and units have optimized, their, they have increased their performance in terms of delivery of their mandates. The different units talk about the university farms. In the university farms, we have ensured that the, the equipment that the vice chancellor in the past three, four years, you see, he actually did a lot in terms of procuring implements, equipment, machineries for the university. So, in the past few months and up to a year, we have increased our capacity to fully utilize this equipment. So, we can say that the directorate of university farms have, has really expanded in terms of its activities. The same goes for the university zoological park. We have a zoo park, and in that zoo park, something new is coming up now, which we hope that the vice chancellor will be able to at least almost complete it to a very high degree. And that is an amusement park in the university zoo. We've been trying to bring up all these units. There are about 16 of them. 16 of them. And so he inst instituted the issue of floating a company, like a private company. We call it FUNAB Integrated Ventures. So all those units, we now put them under FUNAB Integrated Ventures that will be more or less self-sustaining and self-running. We will get our own staff. Staff will be recruited. They will be managed. And the other aspect of this is that we, the, the, the immediate community, and by and large, even beyond the Egba community, Abirikuta community, the Ogun State community, will feel the impact of this university in terms of food production, in terms of value addition to the different products, the produce that we are making from here. So that is currently ongoing. And we sincerely believe all these units will be up and running very well. And in fact, we will add other ones because there have been other ideas of things that we can do. But that we've been thinking, oh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? But we now have a vehicle. And that vehicle is a FUNAB Integrated Ventures that is running like a business entity and that will deliver on the mandate of the university. Vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, there are tripoda mandate, teaching, research, and community engagement extension. Ulushola Maraisa, who is the acting director of Directorate of University Farms, Dew Farms, sheds more light on the state of affairs under the tenure of Professor Salako. When he came, because of the interest he has in the farm, he supplied us with uh, many equipment, many implements that we work on the farm. This one, because of this, we are able to add, uh, increase the income generating uh, revenue of the university. Take for instance, before you came on board, uh, we cultivate, let, let me take cassava for instance, for example. We are not, we are, we are able to, to cultivate about just between three and five hectares of land for cassava production. But when he came on board, he was, he was able to supply us with a cassava planter. It, well, you know, since then, we have been able to cultivate more than 20, 25 hectares of cassava. By that, uh, by that, by that, uh, the internal general revenue for university is increased in that process. And if you talk about the tree crop plantation too, we have uh, about, um, 70 hectares of oil, oil palm, oil palm plantation in this uh, university. And here, uh, the after production, we discovered that 
the old machine that we use the machine that we use for producing this oil palm are not it's too small it's a small scale uh machine that we, we that, that we use to produce oil palm but when he came on board during this period during his tenure he was able to uh to acquire new equipment that can produce large volumes of oil palm like the one that you can see here you know they can produce large volume of oil palm so that one too well, after the commission of the project and when this thing is put into use it will increase the quantity of oil palm that is produced and by that the uh, income generation, generation uh, revenue of the university will be increased okay. combined investor you are talking about is one of the uh, equipment the machine that were supplied to us with that when we'll be, we'll be able to if for instance we 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 have planter two that are used to plant uh, whether maize or rice those one can plant many hectares of land so with the use of this combined harvester it, it is easy for us to harvest to harvest the grains and the seeds when the time of a harvesting comes as it is often said that health is wealth while the leadership kept everybody on his or her toes to ensure the needful was done, Professor Salako was also mindful of the wellness of his staff. In tandem with this belief, the health center of the university has witnessed a great lift, apart from necessary staffing, drug supply, and installation of a giant electricity generator with an additional ambulance bus on standby. The center was complemented with a maternity center and imputes to enhance its services. The vice chancellor explains. We have been able to build a maternity home with equivalent bed. Although it's not yet functional. Why did you do this? Oh, because uh, we need to really serve the community and the, I mean the immediate community. When I say immediate, our staff our 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 students and of course people in the in the environment immediate environment we also bought a, a nestle machine for the university clinic and that is one of the uh, most recent type of extra machine and we, we are, uh, that is meant for human beings well, i should put it on record that we bought extra machine for the college of veterinary medicine Dr. Abiodun Omoni Amusho is a director of health services. We have never gained so much under any administration as we have gained under Professor Salako's uh, regime. First, the time he came into office on 1st of November 2017, we have only this building. Only this building we are under now as Health Services Department. During his tenure, additional two buildings have been added. Ditto, the maternity building and the X-ray unit. Another uh, positive impact is the approval of the board for this department. Before his uh, regime, this place was not under any management board and it was a lot of challenge for whoever is on this seat. Because we have, this is a multidisciplinary department. We have doctors, we have nurses, we have pharmacists, we have social workers, we have medical lab scientists, we have environmental specialists, all with their very varied agitations, which if not properly managed and harnessed, can cause rancor repeatedly. So the presence of that board has stabilized the administration of this place. So in terms of infrastructure, there is no head of unit office that the hand of this administration has not touched in terms of uh, 
providing comfort like air conditioner, befitting tables and chairs to work with, buying reagents and uh, replenishing the drug stock as when due. Then the staff list we have increased to the capacity the management was able to do. Because it is one thing for us to submit a request list. It is another thing for the power that be in Abuja to grant all the requests. Overall, we have benefited a lot. As an all-encompassing focused administrator, as much as Professor Salako was concerned in making his staff walk his talk, he was also mindful of how best to enhance their capacity for optimum benefit and for the advancement of the university as a citadel of excellence. Both local and overseas trainings were accorded staffers while promotions were given to them regularly. Capacity building has not been left out. And when we talk about capacity building, ICT training, value addition in terms of agricultural commodities, particularly cassava and snails. And as I also said, we have equipped quite a number of our centers for the purpose of training, research, and of course, from extension services. Recently, I think about a year or two ago, we had about 300 desktop computers supplied to different units and individuals. The entrepreneurship building, entrepreneurship skill is something that we pay attention to, great attention. And uh, we equip them with regards to equipment for fashion, design, hair dressing, shoe making, agricultural value addition, coaching services, and uh, photography. We are boosting the photography unit, especially with the due to the fact that we have a professional in cinematography here, who is uh, a fellow in person of uh, Alagbatunde Kelani. For internet, we have invested quite a number of our fund in the area of uh, internet connection using fiber optics. And uh, we upgraded certain equipment for teaching and research, uh, multimedia equipment in classrooms, and solar powered inverter system. Staff promotion has been regular, even when delayed by strike. We are, we, are, we, are, we are up to date with staff promotion, and I want to place it on record that under this uh, administration, we had uh, three library professors for the first time. You know, library professors for the first time under our administration. The university librarian is a professional and two others working in the library. The registrar of FINAB, Dr. Akim Bola Adekola, amplifies more the bold steps taken by the administration to give meaning to motivating staff. We can beat our chest and say that in the life of this administration, we have performed excellently well. I said excellently well because I know that be it academic, senior or junior non-teaching, be it technologist, technical, professional, or even junior staff, we have been fair to all. We have ensured that nobody who deserves to be promoted miss or miss, uh, miss the promotion at any point in time. We have not only ensured that they didn't miss promotion, but we ensure the timeliness of the promotion to ensure that the processing was done fast enough to ensure that uh, they don't have to wait or to be looking forward to such promotion. Every process was made transparent and um, staff themselves can attest to it that um, under this administration, I can tell you, for instance, what used to be a rank chorus exercise 
that will start having an appeal. In fact, the, my first three weeks in office, I received about 25, 25 petitions against, against promotion irregularity, protests, appeals against uh, decision taken at registry review. To the grace of Almighty God, we have conducted five. Nobody has appealed against any decision that we have taken at our uh, promotion interview. Not only that we liberalized the process, we made it open that everybody can know why he didn't get promotion if it happens. And for that reason, all the cadres have been treated fairly. So in terms of promotion, we have done well. And I mentioned that we were, in the course of the promotion too, there is another aspect of it that staff always clamor for and usually even, usually even become issues of agitation with the unions. Without them prompting us, we have done a lot of conversions for staff who have additional professional and uh, educational certificates to qualify them for some other cadres in the university. Be it the technology, some of them who are just lab assistants who have been able to get the HND, we have converted them laterally into the technology cadre. We have given the same treatment to professional accountants in the bursary, from certain officers in the registry. And I want to also tell you that in the history of this university, we have contacted the largest number of non-teaching staff to academic staff. That many of them who have obtained PhDs along the way, those who have masters, and uh, whose departments see their potentials needed, we have converted them. Over 35 academic and non teaching staff were converted to academic staff under this regime. It has never happened. It is often said that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Students and workers were given room to exhibit their hobbies via sports to make them complete morally, academically, and in wellness. In terms of sport development, the performance of our students in the last university games that held in University of Lagos, I think was the best performance so far. For the university, I mean for our university, we won three gold medals, four silver medals, and nine bronze medals. Over the years we've been participating, but we are the best in terms of uh, the medals that we won. And I want to put it on record that, uh, yes, our participation was limited by the fact that uh, we are not a conventional university. Our staff have been encouraged to participate in sport. We didn't start it. What we call staff unity games, we only revived it and we had some fun with regards to sport and wellness. In fact, the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian University uh, for now branch introduced what you call the uh, Wellness and Fitness Day once a month, and we encourage that. As an the Vice Chancellor also reels out what has been done to acknowledge eminent past professors in the institution who had contributed to its development. It's the fact that I've been able to give honor to whom honor is due. Our past heroes, let me call it, our retired professors in this university have been honored the way they have not been honored, the way they were never honored in the past. In, 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 in the sense that uh, some of them became a, a, a meritorious professor. We have been building after some of them. And I think that alone is something that uh, we should 
teach our younger generation to keep acknowledging achievement. That I had the opportunity to do it is something that will remain memorable for me. He did not fail also to recognize the inputs of other external stakeholders who have made his tenure worthwhile. The relationship I've been able to foster with some stakeholders. Let me let me give an example. We gave Professor Wallace Inka and Professor Tony Falola honorary degrees. We did not anticipate that one day Professor Wallace Inka will feed the South to Federal University of Agriculture at Okuta. He has done that and he did that this year. I mean, relating with a Nobel laureate of his caliber and having the university to have his own legacy instituted in the university, I think remains memorable to me and it shall remain memorable that I was able to do beyond the my own big concept of people working in silo. Oh, we are a university of agriculture. Why should we, what should we have to do with a, a literature extract? I mean, somebody in the area of literature, somebody in the area of humanities. But I saw beyond that, and it shall remain memorable that I, I, I was able to tap into that relationship. Many of these projects that we talk about, the money did not come from the university directly. It came from external sources, and usually government agencies, like tertiary education trust fund, NIDA, I mentioned NIDA just now, the capital fund from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, the, the capital fund, a very a very small percentage of it actually will be called the internally generated revenue. But majority of, of the fund that we used for our achievements came from these external bodies. In terms of a community relationship, I mentioned it. I think we. I do not always like it to to actually give myself calls. Virtually all the agencies, but the major ones being police, directorate of state service, civil defense, even the local vigilante. We had, and we have good relationship with them. The traditional rulers, the universities in the good books of traditional rulers, who are directly involved in our communities. The Alaki of Egala, the Agura of Bagura, the Odo Oshel, Odo, and even the, 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 the Oshile, and the Olibara of Ibarra. We relate very well with them. And of course, we don't take for granted the parents of our students whenever they come in here. We give, we listen to them, and if any matter should come to my table with regards to any student and the parent, definitely my office has always been open to listen to them. How has Professor Salako been coping with this tasking job? And his family without friction. I think it's only a liar that will say that uh, he had no frictions. There are frictions caused by the fact that uh, one had to travel quite often and the rest of it. But I think uh, the family supported my application for the position of vice chancellor. So all I needed to do was that I'm doing the job that you asked me to go and do. <laughs> that is one. Uh, on a more serious note, there is no family that where you don't have friction. Everybody must manage whatever the friction, and that's the hallmark for maturity. If you say you have a family without a friction, I don't think it is true. So the home front is very solid, very, very solid. But what are the legacies this administration would be leaving behind? University Bossa, Mr. Chukuweke Ezekpeazu, FCA, comments. So much legacies to leave behind. One or so is the one I'm talking about. Because there are physical structures that you will, I myself will come back still and see. Ah, so these things happen during our own tenure. Thank God for the leader. You know, so 
Let me begin that this campus or this university will be full of projects that this administration has started and completed. In terms of accountability, there are scorecards that will show you that this administration has been accountable. You know, um, some assessment that was done recently by the ICPC, this university has ranked very well. Several years, first, second, you know, so that shows these are indicators of uh, uh, good governance. Legacy of serving to mankind. Well, there's no doubt that the Federal Investor of Agriculture, Belkota, is living up to his mandate. And uh, we are encouraged by the the various landmark achievements they have made over the years and are still making. And that we recommend the investor for. Are you satisfied with what you have done within the five-year tenure allowable for you? Let me say that I'm satisfied with my achievements so far. And when I say I'm satisfied, it doesn't mean that I've done everything perfectly well. It doesn't mean that I've done everything 100% correct. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, by self-assessment, all those things are listed as achievements are things that are going to impact on the life of all stakeholders in this university. The point that I know is that no individual can complete the task or not. And if you are given a five-year tenure, you should know that after five years, you must hand over to somebody else. That person too will have something to contribute in future, depending on his vision and mission. For me, I set my goals and I achieved every aspect of my goals. Periscoping into the future, what is your uppermost desire for the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta? If we can be the best in the world, I, will, I would really want that. But let me be modest. At least, in, I hope that we should get to the level of uh, being among the first 50 or 100 universities in the world. This uh, a 2021 to 2025 strategic plan for the university, you know, is because we have vision that we have been able to put this together. There are many institutions that do not run, uh, run with strategic plan. But we, this was developed last year. And uh, within the next uh, four years, five years, if things that are in there are well implemented, so now you find a seat among the topmost universities in the world. Having come to the conclusion that he has done what he wanted done within the allowable time frame, with evidence of visible performance, it is not out of place to put him in the thoughts of Frank Lloyd Wright, who says, I quote, I know the prize of success, dedication, hard work, and an unremitting devotion to the things you want to see happen. End of quote. Indeed, Professor Felix Kolaole Salako knew the prize of success and he has delivered along the mindset of this quote from Thomas Jefferson. Nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from his goal. What a parting message for a finished job of a man worthy of emulation and elevation to a higher ground.